Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about the nonlinear animation workflow. The nonlinear animation workflow is really, really useful. It allows you to take one or more animation and essentially pre record those animations within the software so that they're easier to push together, string together, or even edit more simply after the fact. So, for example, you can see this character here. This character is made up of four different animations or, or poses. So if we pause it, it starts out in a T pose and then it blends to this walking animation and then it blends to this kind of wave animation and then it blends to this last stance. And all of that, all of these different animations, they were separate complete animations, uh, but using the power of nonlinear animation, I was able to push them together and make them look like they we're all animated together. So again, in this video, we're gonna talk about how to string individual animations together. But at the end, I wanted to talk about how you can edit animations you've already done and modify them in a much more simple way than going back to the keyframe editor to adjust things. Cool, let's get going. In the first part of this video, I wanna talk about how you can take these individual animations we see here and essentially reformat them so they're almost pre-recorded clips, kind of like you'd see in a video editing software. So in order to do that, it's very, very simple. So if we start at frame zero and we just select one of these armatures and you can see that I'm in the dope sheet and I'm in the action editor and this is mocap data. So you can see there's a keyframe on every frame. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to something that I'll remember after the fact. I'll name it knee dance. And then all you have to do is if you come over here and click push down, that reformats the animation and turns it into this essentially video clip format. And you can see, I can do that for each of my animations. Okay, so you can see that each of these keyframe animations have been pushed down into this video clip format. You can see that once it's in this video clip format, you can't actually edit the keyframes. But if you right click and click start editing stashed action or shift tab, you can then go back in and edit your keyframes if you need to do that. And then you can just click off of it and it will resave as your nonlinear animation track. Okay, so once your nonlinear animations or NLA clips are saved how you want them, you can start applying these clips to the same armature. Now, one thing to keep in mind, I can add all of these clips to one armature because the way the armature is built is the same across the board. Um, you can see all of the bones are, are formatted and named in the same way. If I were to save the action of this character and try and put it on a totally different rig, a lot would go wrong. And so what I often do is I use Mixamo to at least rig my characters and whether or not I use mocap data or not, having the consistency of a Mixamo rig allows me to move animations across a wide spectrum of characters because they're all using the same master rig. Okay, so once you have all of these NLA clips, you only need one armature. So I have one saved over here. This character is just standing in the T pose and you can see the T pose track is already put on. And so in order to add new animations to your character, all you have to do is in the action editor, you click shift A, and then you choose which saved animation you wanna put into your scene. So I already have T pose, so I'm going to start by having this character walk. I'm just gonna space it out. One really useful thing to keep in mind is, for instance, if I click this T pose, you have all of these options on, on the right hand side, and we'll get into, into this a little bit more later, but the frame start and end is very useful if you're working with a static pose. So if I extend our end frame, then you can see our character. Our character stays in the T pose for 33 frames instead of the, the two frames before. Um, now you can see when I add our walk animation on top of our T pose, that the pose automatically kind of sticks with the beginning of the walk until we get into this animation bar. 
The reason that is, is because in the extrapolation tab, in the blending tab, it's causing a hierarchy issue to happen. So we have our walk animation on top. And so basically what Blender is saying is we're not going to even acknowledge anything below the walk animation and we'll start playing the walk animation as soon as we hit this bar on the timeline. So in order to get past that, you go to the extrapolation tab and you click nothing. So you can see we're going to stick on our T-pose until we get to our walk animation and then it snaps into our walk animation. And we don't really want that. And the reason we don't want that is because we want it to look like this character is naturally going from the T-pose and then we want it to blend into the walk. And that is a pretty easy problem to solve. And so if we click on our walk editor and go into blend in and blend out, we can, just like we would in a video editing software, ease into our next animation. So you can see now that we have that blend in, the arms animate down and into the walk animation. A useful tool is this auto blend. It naturally identifies the, the clip below its position and the clip above it and applies blending to it. And that just makes it a little bit smoother and makes it so you don't have to like zoom in and, and make sure all of the blending matches. Okay, so we have that first animation in there. Another thing to keep in mind is, so if we go back to our walk animation, we talked about our frame start and frame end, but if we go down to our action clip, we have this tab here, and it's a repeat slider. So if we scale that up, you see it lengthens our, our clip, and you see that little bar here, that's essentially saying that our clip is repeating as many times as we dictate over here. And this is a really useful feature, especially if you're working with a cyclical animation because it makes it so you don't have to copy and paste keyframes at all. It just, your character walks for as long as you want, want your character to walk. So we're actually going to shorten our clip to about here, and then we're going to add our next animation. Oops. I would like to add the wave animation next. Okay, and so you can see that we still have our hold extrapolation on, and so we'll turn that off. And then we will auto blend. So you can see that the, the animation naturally blends into the next one. And if we pull this forward, you can see the auto blend is automatically changing how fast it blends into the next animation. Okay, so I'm going to bring our end frame further back because we want it to get into the next animation. So if we go to knee dance, bring the end frame closer here, change this to nothing and at auto blend, that should be good. So now you can see we have four animations or poses and they're blending pretty seamlessly between the two. So another thing I wanted to talk about is how to use nonlinear animation in order to edit animation that already exists. So you can see if we go into this animation, this is the case especially with motion capture data because you can see motion capture data puts a keyframe on every frame. So if I wanted to actually have my character's head up at this point, you can see, okay, it's up for a frame, but then it snaps right back down. You can combat that problem pretty simply with nonlinear animation. So if we come out of here and go over to this collection here, I just have my walking animation. So I have my character looking forward and just walking casually. Now, what would I do or what could I do if I wanted my character to, to look around? I think you already know the answer, nonlinear animation. <laughs> okay, so if I go back to my dope sheet and find this animation and push that down to its own uh, clip. What I can do from here is I can animate on top of this. So if I go to pose mode and do some auto keying. So I'm going to have my character while she's walking, look to her left. And then she wants to look up probably. And then I'll have her kind of come back to homeostasis. Move some of that around so it looks a bit more normal. 
So just with one, two, three, four, five, six keyframes, I was able to edit this walking animation to exactly what I needed. Um, and you can see the way this works is we still have that nonlinear animation clip below, but on top we have those keyframes we put in. Um, and so any keyframe I put in like this, it's going to add it to this channel here, but I can I can still I can still push this down to its own animation and even animate on top of that. So pretty quickly I added a little waving animation and that can obviously be edited however you need. And that was five minutes of work that I put in to just modify this walking animation to exactly what I needed. And you can see I added three layers onto that and pretty simple. So I hope that all helps. Nonlinear animation has been super helpful for me and it allows me to focus on smaller animations at a time because I always know that I can stitch them together and, and layer animation on top of each other to get exactly what I need. I'd love to see what y'all learn from your own experiments with nonlinear animation. But that's all for this video. Thanks for tuning in. A like and subscribe and also share. That's really helpful for me as well. Thanks a lot. Bye.